The Challenge of the Yukon. On King! On New Husky! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo League dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Old Man McClinic was happy. You'd never know it to look at him because he never let a smile soften his hard features. But he'd had a good day, and now he was counting his profits. Eighty, ninety, ninety-five dollars in coins and twice that much in gold dust. See those leather bags again? Yeah, at least twice that much. The old man counted the coins over again and lifted the bags of gold dust once more. McClinic's son, Bobby, busied himself carrying flour and meat from the storehouse to the store. As he stooped to pick up a bag of flour in the storehouse, he heard a strange sound. Hmm, what's that? There it is again. Oh, it's a dog. A husky. What's the matter, boy, huh? What's the matter? Oh, your paw. It's all bloody. Did you get caught in a trap or something? Well, we better do something about that, fella. You just stay right here. I'll go get some stuff and fix you up right away. You'll do nothing of the kind. Dad, I didn't hear you come in. I know you didn't. But I knew that you were up to something. It's way past dark. You ain't got half them bags carried in. I know, but look, Dad, this dog, he's hurt. How many times have I told you not to bring those mongrels in here? But, Dad, we can't let him You stay... sassing me again? No, but... Uh, since your mother died, I can't do nothing with you unless I take the strop to you. But I'll do it and quick. You don't move fast and do as I tell you. But I hate to turn him out in the cold. You'll do just that. If I see hide the hair of him, I'll stop you to within an inch of your life. Now get him out of here and get to work. Come on, boy. I gotta take you out. But I'll fix you up a bed of pine branches back of here and give you food and water. Even if I can't keep you, I may I'll make sure you get better. Hey, what's the idea of pulling me away from a poker game? You come in the back room and listen to what I got to say. I was winning in that poker game, Buck. Penny ante stuff. This is the real thing. What are you talking about? Sit down. All right. Joe, I just went into McClinic's store, and he was out in the storehouse. Well, you don't say. Well, ain't that interesting. Shut up. While he was out, I had a look around. Yeah? He's got enough gold dust and furs in that back room to put us on easy street the rest of our lives. You mean old man McClinic? Yeah. Well, why didn't you grab some of it? And be caught with it before I could get out of town? I ain't that dumb. Here's the way I figure it, Joe. We got to have our getaway set before we grab onto that gold. But, Buck, uh, we need a dog team. I'm coming to that. Jed Ferguson brought the mail today... And he's in town for the night. Yeah. Now, uh, if we could get him in here and uh, give him a few too many drinks... We could use his team for our getaway. Sure. And it's the fastest team in these parts. Now, you start working on Jed right away. we got to have that sled ready to pull out of here at midnight. It was almost midnight when Bobby was awakened with the bark of a dog he had bedded behind the shed. Gee, if Dad hears him, he'll... I'd better go out and stop him. Hey, you be quiet. If Dad hears you... What's the matter? What are you... Oh, down there. Some men and a dog team. Maybe they just want something from the store. Quiet, boy. I'll see what they want. Hello there. If you want something, I'll open up for you. Well, that's mighty nice of you, kid. Say, that's the mail team. That's old Boris, Jed's lead dog. 
You have no right to use that team. Shut your mouth. Come to the store with us. Why, you... Hey, let me alone. The door's locked anyway. Hang on to it, Joe. I've already given you the lock. I'll open the door. Get in there. Stop it. Gag him, Joe. Let yeah. me go. What's going on here? Bob, is that you? Yeah, it's Bob. And this is for you. Grab that lantern, Buck, before it sets the place afire. Uh, I got it. Now, you tie that kid up so he won't give us no trouble. Yeah. And help me get this stuff out of here. Bob, where are you? What the... Where are you? You're tied up and gagged. Wait, I'll help you. There. Dead. Are you all right? Oh, my head. So, what happened? They hit you, knocked you out. Then they tied me up and robbed the store. Robbed? Robbed the store? Why, the dirty rats. How? How long have I been out? They left a long time ago, Dad. Oh, they did? Well, I'm going after them, that thieving skunk. No, Dad. My gold. They stole my gold. And my furs. Look, the best ones are gone. Gone. I'll get them weasels if it's the last thing I ever do. But, Dad, you, your head is bleeding. Oh, I'm all right. Where's my pocket? Where's my rifle? Let me go with you. They're staying right here. I'm getting them dirty thieves and I can't be bothered with you. You stay right here, you hear me? Yeah, but, I'll Dad... I'll show them they can't get away with this. I'll kill them on sight. It's Bob. Bob McClinic. Let me in, Pete. What's wrong, Bob? We've been robbed. I wonder if you'll help me. Robbed? Dad went after him, and now a blizzard's coming up, and I'm afraid he'll get lost. He sure will. Uh, say, Sergeant Preston Monty came to town late last night. He'll be more help than I would. Where is he? Well, he's at the hotel. Thanks, Pete. I'll go over there right now. Yes, Sergeant Preston. I know it was the mail team they had. Jet let me drive him a ways once, and I know old Boris, his lead dog, anywhere. And your father went after them, you say? Yes. He was weak. His head was bleeding. We shouldn't have done that. When did he leave? Almost an hour ago. He told me to stay at the store, but when I heard the blizzard coming up, I went over to Pete's, and he told me you were here. Yeah, ready. Come on, King. Is it all right if I go with you, Sergeant? Well, it's worth going in a blizzard, son. Oh, please let me go. I'm strong, and maybe you'll need me if Dad has to be brought home or something. You may be right. All right, Bob. I'll go back to your store and pick up the trail from there. One thing, on your huskies. Gee, the storm's getting worse. Do you think King can keep on the trail? It seems to know what he's doing, Bob. King has gone off into that clump of trees. Oh, your huskies. Whoa. Come on, Bob. We'll see what he's after. There's a pile of snow. What is it, boy? What? It's your father, Bob. Dad. Sergeant. Wait a minute. He's still alive, but he's unconscious. We'll have to get him on the sled and wrap him in blankets. Can you drive a dog team, oh, Bob? Oh, yes, sir. I could take him back. Well, it isn't far. I'm sure you'll be back all right. But won't you need the team if you're going after the thieves? I'll take King and keep going. We'll travel faster alone. I know just where to look for them, providing this blizzard keeps up. Buck and Joe staggered along the trail as the full fury of the blizzard struck them. A powerful dog team, accustomed to carrying the mail through any kind of storm, kept going. Buck! You know where we're going? I don't know, north from south in this blizzard. Don't you think we ought to stop? Maybe we're off the trail. These dogs seem to know where they're doing. If we give them their heads, they may get us to shelter. Seems to me they've been swinging to the left. Yeah, we got to take a chance. Uh, I'm so tired. I can't go much farther. Look, look ahead there. Ain't that a cabin? Uh, I can't see. This snow's so thick. Sure, it's a cabin. These dogs knew it was there. Where's your huskies? Come on, Joe, hurry. Do you think it's safe, Buck? We ain't no choice. We gotta have shelter, don't we? Here we are. Oh, oh, you huskies. Don't seem to be anybody here. Well, 
soon find out. Uh, anybody home? Oh, it's empty. But the wood is set for a fire. There's food. Uh, sure feels good to get out of that blizzard. Come on, Joe. Get busy and rustle up a fire while I get the goal in off the sled. We'll hole in here until this blizzard's over. Man alive, listen to that wind. Let her blow. This blizzard's the best thing that could have happened. It'll cover our trail. Now, bring that lantern over here, Joe. Let's have a look at this gold. Yeah. Well, here you are. Boy, there must be eight or ten thousand in those money bags. <laughs> now, what do you think of Buck Judson? Guess I know how to knock off a job, don't I? You sure do, Buck. You sure do. Hey, listen to them dogs. Ah, they're just hungry. Guess we better feed them pretty soon. Help me put this money back in the bags. Yeah, all this plus what we get for the furs. Yeah, we'll be set for a long time. Get your hands up, both of you. Watch them, Jack. Get your oh, hands you. up. I'm arresting you. I, I'm mounted. Don't move. I'll take that gun. I, you can't do this. Get off my hand. Take him off. Hiking. Back off. Oh, my hand. You shouldn't have tried to pull that gun. This dog's trained to watch for that. You've got nothing on us. Why are you busting in like this? you got no proof. You not only stole golden furs from McClintock... You stole the mail team, and that's government property. That's where you made your big mistake. Mistake? I know just where to find you. This happens to be the regular stop between towns on the mail route. The dogs brought you here by themselves. So, you... so that's how you that's knew. That's how I knew. Now get together, I'm handcuffing you. We'll go back to town when this blizzard is over. It was the evening of the following day. Old man McClinic sat beside his stove, a blanket over his knees. Bob looked at him anxiously. Do you feel any better, Dad? I'm... I'm all right, I guess. Don't worry. Sergeant Preston will get the money back. Maybe. Anybody home? Sergeant Preston! Oh, Preston! Hello, Mr. McClinic. I think I have something of yours here. Yeah? He's got the money bags, Dad. The money. And the furs. They're out on my sled. I told you he would. I'm mighty grateful to you, Sergeant. I I understand that I owe my life to this dog of yours, Sergeant. Yes, King found you, didn't he, boy? <laughs> I've never had any use for dogs. But you have a great one there, Sergeant. Why, uh, if it hadn't been for the husky bomb took in, we'd never have found the thieves. What? What are you talking about? I, I didn't tell Dad, Sergeant. I was afraid he might be mad. What do you mean? Well, I didn't tell you, Dad... I made a bed for that dog with a sore foot out beside the shed. Oh, you did, eh? Huh? He, he barked when those men came, and I went out. That's how I knew it was the mail team they had. You see, uh, when Bob told me it was the mail team, I knew just where they'd go in a blizzard. I, I hope he won't be mad, Dad. Where's that uh, dog now, son? He's, he's out in the shed. His leg isn't any better yet, and... Well, I, I thought that... Go and get him. Bring him in. You mean in here? I've changed my mind about dogs, son. <laughs> I'm going to get you the best team I can find. Oh, Dad. That's the finest thing you could do for him, Mr. McClintock. Dogs are the best friends in the world, aren't they, King? These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Hugh Holder speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.